a twinkle midge, we're going to move on to the final fly, and that's going to be the gas midge. You're probably wondering how some of these names come up, and quite frankly, it's because I can't think of anything else. But on this particular fly, the general idea was to have, since I'm using a silver dubbing for the thorax area, it's meant to look a little bit like a gas bubble. To start with, we're going to use another one of those standard curved hooks, which are used for scuds, as you can tell by now, midges. And we're going to attach our thread. Get it down onto the bend of the hook. And we're ready for our body. The body is going to be D-rib again on this fly. So we'll take our D-rib. And before we tie it in, we're going to come in, cut it at, cut it at an angle. There we go. That way when I tie it in by the tip, I'm not going to have any buildup, thus creating a little hump for when I bring the material forward. And just to show you another little trick when using the D-rib, or if you want to use a tubing, let's also tie in a piece of fish hair. Fish hair is made many, many years ago. And it was probably produced for using on wings of streamer flies. But as you're going to soon see here, it also makes great ribbing, especially on small flies. So we'll tie in this piece of white fish hair and bring our thread forward. Now we're going to take our D-rib and just start wrapping it forward. Give it some good stretch there. I don't want to get my ribbing in there yet. And just start wrapping it forward. It doesn't have to be quite so tight as we have before since we're going to be bringing some ribbing forward. Since we're up in the thorax, take several turns of thread, make sure it's tied down. Then we're going to come in, cut it off. Better double check that tension there to make sure it don't come completely unraveled. And we're going to trim off the excess there that I missed. And now we can take our ribbing. Take that fish hair. And what we're going to do is just go right in between each one of these humps of the D-rib. And as you can see, it just kind of enhances, whoops, it just enhances the overall segmentation of the fly. Just keep coming forward, going right in between those humps, just like so. Just makes them a little more pronounced. Take off that ribbing, and we're going to set that hook up a little bit to finish off the fly. For the thorax, we're going to be using a pretty new material, which is called Quick Descent. Most dubbings are made out of natural materials such as rabbit, squirrel, possum, beaver, muskrat or some type of wool or nylon material. When you first look at this, it looks very fine. And I'd wager to guess if you've never seen this material before, you, you have no idea what this is made out of. Well, what it is, it's shredded aluminum. And it's been done very fine, so you don't have to worry about it sticking into your finger like shredded metal. It's very easy to work with as you can see here. We just dub this right onto our thorax. If you get a scraggler or two there, trim those right on out. And we'll just dub a thorax out of this. And what this does is 
kind of creates the illusion of an air bubble. Gives it that flash that you want. Plus it's acting kind of like a substitute bead. Since we are d dealing with a metallic, it is going to be a little heavier than natural dubbing. And thus helping you to sink your fly a little easier. Build this up a little bit. Just like so. Trim off any scragglers you got. Now if you want, you can add a little bit of crystal hair like we did on the twinkle midge. Or you can just finish it off with a soft tackle like what we're going to do. This time instead of using partridge just to show you how versatile that particular technique can be, we'll just take a standard hen neck. I mean if you really wanted you could come in and select one of the smaller hackles and just wrap a couple times and you'd have your soft tackle. But to show you that technique we've been using with the partridge, we'll come in here and select one of the bigger saddle type feathers. And we'll cut off so that we don't have that web. And you just kind of stroke the fibers so they kind of stand straight out from the hook stem. Once you do that, you can come in, grab the tips, and pull off the amount that you want. Didn't quite get exactly the amount, so re-grab it. There we go. Now I'm going to re-grab the butts just like that. Now when, when I do that, I'm not making a cylinder type bundle out of it. It's still kind of spread out. So I'll come up to the hook shank, measure it for length, Again, we're going to go to the hook barb area. Again, you want to pinch it on the side towards you. Straighten out your thread. That's very important, so you have a lot of control over it. And you just follow the soft tackle right on around to the other side. And since this is off the stem, do not release your index finger. Just keep coming on around. And as you do that, you can still see the fibers go all the way around and then cinch down on it. Take a few more wraps. And when you do that, you can create a soft tackle out of any material, any color that you want. Out of all the things you've probably seen in the, this particular video, this has to be one of the most useful pr techniques especially when it comes to midges. Get in there and trim that out. Or another thing we can use is a product from Stonefly. It's kind of like squizzers. These particular scissors are just a little finer tipped than their heavier duty scissors. You can get in there and do some fine. There you go. It's amazing what some real fine tipped scissors will do. Do your head. Whoop. And we're ready to whip finish it off. Whip finish it off. And you can just about just touch your thread to the scissors. Oops. And they're so sharp it just breaks right off. And that's what we call the the gas midge.